Okay. My wife says uh, that the correct uh, uh, pronunciation of the Greek word uh, for the uh, meeting place in a Greek, an ancient Greek city-state is Agora. But anyway, it stands for Assembling Galaxies of Resolved Anatomy. We started the project uh, back in 2012 here at UCSC. And uh, the results have been slower in coming than we had hoped, but uh, we're still going strong. So this is an update as of now. Uh, so there's roughly 160 participants from many different institutions. And we've had two published papers, which I'm going to review. And we're working on a new series of papers now based on our cosmological simulation. So there's an online workspace. We've had these two journal articles. We've had, this is going to be the seventh of our uh, workshops, the one tomorrow, starting now but continuing tomorrow. And uh, we've also had many uh, telecons during the workshops and in between the workshops. Uh, So uh, there's two parts to uh, what we're basically trying to do is run a series of simulations with most of the modern code and compare carefully the aspects of the simulations that are different because of the code differences, but not different because of anything else. So we have both isolated galaxy simulation and Simulations at 10 to the 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13 solar masses. These are supposed to be cosmological zoom-in simulations. Uh, at each of these four masses, uh, these are the halo masses today, some are with one each is uh, with few mergers and another with lots of mergers. And there's uh, agreed upon Lagrangian region, so we know that uh, the simulation should have high resolution within that region. We want to have the same UV background, the same initial mass function and metal generation, the same cooling function, so that these aspects are kept as similar as possible between the different codes, so that we can understand better the differences that arise from different subgrid assumptions like feedback and things like that. And we compare the simulations using the YT uh, 3D uh, volumetric analysis and visualization package. So all the images that I'll show you and all the images that we generate are using YT. YT can read the output from all of these codes, and then the rest of the analysis is done in parallel. We also uh, can make sunrise images, taking into account uh, stellar evolution and the effects of dust scattering and attenuation, uh, because sunrise is set up to work directly from YT. So this was our first paper published in uh, 2014. And uh, the goals were to raise the realism and predictive power of galaxy simulations and understanding of the feedback processes that regulate galaxy metabolism. This was a comparison of nine different codes simulating exactly the same uh, cosmological region. Uh, but this is only pure dark matter simulation. And uh, if you look really carefully, and, and there was a fair amount of analysis in the paper, you can actually see significant differences in the different codes. Uh, I mean, overall, they're pretty similar, but uh, there were also some significant differences. This is from the second paper, which was published in 2016. And this is based on uh, Milky Way mass, roughly 10 to the 12 solar mass, uh, a galaxy that has about 20% gas, 80% uh, stellar mass in the disk. So it's supposed to represent a Milky Way type galaxy at redshift 1. And uh, here you see four adaptive mesh refinement simulations, two ARC, Enzo, Ramses, and five uh, smooth particle hydro type simulations, including Gizmo, which is the moving mesh code. And uh, there are some differences, but, and this is projected density, this is temperature. And these are just two examples of the 35 uh, comparison uh, figures in this paper. Here are some more examples. Surface density profile, 
rotation velocity profile, velocity dispersion profile, the Kennecott-Schmidt relation. And the overwhelming thing that I think we deduced is to a much greater extent than I think any of us expected before we started this, these nine different codes that really have very different backgrounds, hardly any uh, direct uh, uh, evolution where the teams that develop the codes really work carefully together. But despite that, the, the results are remarkably similar. So the codes agree very well with one another in many dimensions. There were some interesting differences. I mean, you can see some here in the vertical structure, for example. Uh, but this was actually remarkably reassuring. Now, these, again, are isolated galaxy simulations. Uh, participants found an optimal set of simulation parameters that make their codes compatible. Uh, it turned out that uh, we ran all the codes three times, in a few cases, four times. And the second time, the, the, the thing is that we wanted to have similar star formation rates and so forth. And it turned out that the initial assumptions that were made, the, the parameters that were adjusted, had to be readjusted to get those things to work out right. And I think virtually all the code teams found, uh, when they did careful comparisons, that they could correct errors or improve their code. So this is, I think, something that uh, has been very useful for all the codes involved. So now what we're doing is focusing on two key projects where all the teams are running the same zoom-in simulations of the 10 to the 12 solar mass halo at redshift zero uh, with relatively few mergers. People are welcome to run additional cases, but that's one case that everybody's running. And uh, we want to study the certain galactic medium and also this issue of clumps. For example, this is uh, Yu Ching Guo's uh, picture of a galaxy that has four clumps that his code uh, detected. This is a uh, Handel's galaxy. Uh, and the CGM team is going to use Trident, which uh, Cameron Hummels just told you about, uh, to analyze uh, the certain galactic medium. So five codes uh, are actually producing results. The art results are still coming. But we already have results down to redshift 10 or 9 or 8, and in some cases even lower, uh, from cosmological zoom-in simulations from all of these. The, the first step, which uh, we have results for now from four codes, uh, with results coming very soon for art, uh, is just an isolated disk, basically the same isolated disk as we used for paper two. So that's what these are. Uh, and it's just to get everybody on the same page as far as uh, setting up their code properly. Uh, and so ART1 will be coming very soon. Then the key thing is to start the cosmological run, and uh, that's now been started for four codes. And we actually have outputs at redshifts of eight and, in some cases, lower redshifts. Uh, very likely, it'll be necessary to run the codes again. But the plan is that once we're uh, basically running them the way we like, uh, we'll store lots of time steps, and we'll run all the codes down to redshift zero. So we want to define an analysis for the certain galactic medium and clumps papers, generate a first analysis strip, and we are expecting that we'll end up writing papers on both the certain galactic medium and the clumps. And other science topics are certainly welcome. And of course, uh, people who are working with other codes are welcome to join. And of course, the initial conditions have been public. This is a list of the participants who are going to be meeting tomorrow. Many of them are here today. Uh, the meeting tomorrow is in Interdisciplinary Sciences building across the street. Uh, ISB room 102. There will also be a fair number of remote participants. The local organizing committee is Jihoon Kim, who's sitting in the back of the room, and me and Brendan Wells, who's been helping us uh, during this entire workshop. Uh, it was Piero and I who started this project uh, with the help of all of these people, and uh, James Wisely and Jihoon uh, are, of course, here now. Uh, and uh, 
Santi Roca Fabrega, who's also sitting in the back there, raise your hand, Santi, so everybody, uh, has uh, really played an extremely important role in coordinating all of these efforts uh, for this meeting. So uh, some of these pictures have already been shown. Uh, there's this really uh, quite uh, wonderful review article in last year's annual reviews on the certain galactic medium by Tomlinson, Peoples, and Work. And uh, several of these pictures have already been shown. So this is a sort of schematic of the certain galactic medium. Uh, as people are supposed to by now be aware, most of the metals that are produced in galaxies are now in the certain galactic medium. They're not in the dense central parts of galaxies. Uh, if you look at galaxies in the red cloud, then uh, they have a baryon fraction that's observed in the stars and uh, any gas that's uh, never more than about 10% uh, of the total baryons you expect was originally in the halo. Thanks. Uh, the Milky Way mass galaxies are the peak. They'll have as much as 20% uh, of the, baryon, the, the cosmic baryon fraction in the form of stars. So that's true for the Milky Way. Milky Way is sort of at the high end. Uh, and then, of course, as you go down to lower masses, lower halo masses uh, and stellar masses, uh, one also has a smaller fraction of gas turning into stars. Uh, this is showing, in two different ways, the evolution with redshift. This is the Lyman limit systems, so uh, 10 to the 18 uh, column density of neutral hydrogen. Uh, and this is much higher at low redshift than it is at high redshift. And uh, carbon-4 becomes more abundant as you go down in redshift. But magnesium-2 traces the star formation history, peaks around redshift-2. That's what. Uh, so these are all pictures that I took from, from this beautiful review. Uh, this has already been shown by Cameron. Uh, and basically, it shows you that these different uh, metal lines uh, are tracing different cosmic phenomena, uh, different temperatures, different densities, and different origins, uh, photoionized, collisionally ionized, or uh, other. So this is from uh, the concluding section of the review, questions and directions for future work. Data in more need of more theory, theory in need of more data. So discriminants between the various heuristic models of feedback, that's exactly what we're trying to clarify uh, with Agora. How is the remaining cold gas kept from accreting? What are the physical and dynamical structures of the certain galactic medium? What's, and uh, let me just mention, as Cameron said in his talk, uh, a problem with all of the simulation codes is if you use them the way they're set up, you're going to have low resolution in the serpent galactic medium because the densities are low there. So you have to change the improving resolution with higher density if you want to force a high resolution in the surroundings. Of course, that's also going to be more expensive to simulate. But that's the kind of thing that uh, uh, Cameron said is producing rather different results. So an interesting question that I think we're going to discuss tomorrow is if we use the codes the way they're currently set up, where the highest resolution is in the dense central regions of the galaxy, and the resolution in the outer parts is much worse than 100 parsecs. Uh, are we fooling ourselves? Or maybe we'll be OK with the high ion states, oxygen 5, oxygen 6, carbon 4, but not the low ion states. That, that'll be something that we're going to need to understand. What's the mass and composition of the certain galactic medium in high and low redshift, and how do we constrain galaxy evolution models? What are the small scale density and kinematic structure? What does the certain galactic medium do as galaxies quench? Can we understand the results from cos halos that oxygen 5 is more abundant in non-star forming galaxies, less abundant in, in uh, star forming galaxies where it's being ionized to oxygen 6? Or is that really just a halo effect? And where are the metals that are still where are the metals that are still missing from the census? So second focus is on these clumps. Uh, this is the picture that uh, James Wadley showed, uh, and these are 
uh, illustrations of clumps from uh, I Ching Guo's paper 2015, the Candell's paper on some of the clump properties. Thank you. So this is uh, from uh, I Ching's talk last uh, year at the Galaxy Workshop. And uh, we see the clumps in a majority of star-forming galaxies at redshifts 2 to 3, and in a majority of star-forming galaxies down to redshift a half for the lower mass ones. The typical stellar masses are between 10 to the 7 and 10 to the 9 solar masses. And the typical size is around a kiloparsec, but it's also important that at redshift 2, that's basically the resolution of Hubble. So we wouldn't have seen smaller ones than that, or, or we're Anyway, certainly around that. Um, so this was uh, from Yi Ching's paper in 2015, that same paper. Uh, and this is the abundance, the fraction of galaxies that are star forming and have clumps where each clump is off center and each clump has to have 7% of the total UV luminosity of the galaxy. And more than 60% of all galaxies in this mass range, roughly 10 to the 9 to 10 to the 10, continue to, to uh, be clumpy down to redshifts of about a half. The more massive galaxies are less clumpy at lower redshift, but they're all, a majority of them are clumpy at redshifts 2 to 3. This was an, an old picture that showed that the uh, clumps that we catch at smaller galactic century radii are redder. And this is from Yi Ching's latest paper, the 2018 paper, where he's looking again at the color. So the clumps get redder and redder as you move closer to the center. This is the uh, stellar age. Uh, he also looked at things like the attenuation. And you always see the same basic picture, that as you look closer to the galactic center, the clumps are older, redder, more attenuated, and that sure looks like it's telling us that the clumps are migrating. But there's some disagreement about that. So an important observation is the clump gradients are steeper than those of the underlying disk. This is the underlying disk. That's the gradient of the clump. Underlying disk, gradient of the clump. So they're quite different. The clumps are not just some magnified region of the disk. They're a different phenomenon, I think. So this is a, a plot that Avishai put together uh, based on uh, a recent paper by Nira Mandelker. And uh, so this is what the VILA simulations by Daniel Severino uh, showed, that the long-lived clumps have an age that increases as you move closer, to, as you catch them closer to the center. They have a mass that increases as you move them closer to the center. <laughs> They have a, that's a stellar mass, a gas fraction, just about finished, uh, that decreases because the gas is being turned into stars, although some new gas is being accreted. A star formation rate that, because the new gas is being accreted, doesn't change much, but when you divide the star formation rate by the mass, so you get the specific star formation rate, then of course it decreases because the stellar mass is increasing, and the metallicity is increasing. Uh, these are for the long-lived clumps, the short-lived clumps, and the objects that are ex situ, in other words, they're just accreted galaxies, uh, have a quite, a quite different behavior. So how simulation dependent are these results? And that's the basic question that we're going to be answering uh, with these simulations. So we have results for five of these codes. We're hoping that Enzo and Gasoline adds their results, and uh, more code groups are welcome to join. The uh, main group that has not participated, but of course is a, a code that's being widely used, is a repo. Uh, I'm hoping that Volker Springle changes his mind and, and joins. Uh, this is the program for our session tomorrow. Uh, it's all pretty uh, not very detailed, uh, which I think means that we're going to be uh, uh, open to changing uh, the discussion depending on, on what people bring to the discussion tomorrow. But we do have a lot of results to already start analyzing. I haven't shown all of these results, but uh, there are at least 20 uh, sets of slides uh, that Santi has prepared that uh, compare results from uh, uh, at least four different codes. Uh, that's as much as I wanted to say. Any questions or comments?
Questions or comments? Um, um, the, the beauty of comparing different codes is that you have, you know, they developed in a different way. You, you do something and you see what works. Exactly. The problem is once you begin to tune them to get the same result, then all of these different codes become the same code and you can't compare them anymore because it's somehow you, you just no, tune no, your this, parameters. The subgrid physics is still very different. That, but you still, you know, if you, as long as you find differences, you will work on solving these differences. And at the end, I'm not really sure anymore. Did you tune it so that it get the same result, or did you really put in the best physics? You know what I what I mean? It's it's a dangerous situation. Yeah, each group itself sees how oh, the others get something different, so we better fix this. Well, and fixing means. Uh, Tuning, uh, no, not necessarily no, no, no. getting it better. Well, what we're tuning are things like the star formation rate, but not the details of where the, the feedback is happening. And so that's why, I mean, for example, the, just to emphasize the differences, uh, the fire group, optic paper, showed that they do not get long-lived clumps. They do not get clumps that even form stars. They don't migrate. Whereas the VILA simulations and other groups are finding clumps that are long-lived and do migrate. So that's an example where codes that are participating in this are getting very different results, even though they can get similar star formation rates. So I don't think it's true that, that we're not going to learn something because the codes are being forced to agree too much. I'm actually worried that the opposite is going to occur. Hey. Yeah, just on the same point, this is part of the beauty of, of comparing the codes using something like the CGM because uh, the codes are, are tuned to match stellar mass functions and things of this nature. Yeah. Uh, and the CGM, uh, uh, typically these are more pure predictions of, of the codes themselves. Yeah, CGM and clumps, exactly. So, so I don't really think that, that the problem that you raised, Andy, is going to be our big problem. Okay, we're out of time, so uh, let's thank Joel once again.